Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. So I'm, I'm not going to bore you again with another introduction of myself, but thank you to the comprehensive introduction. So let's dive in quickly into the session. Before we start, I I'd like to have a show of hands, please. Um, how many folks here have contributed to WordPress? Show of hands, please. Awesome. Awesome. How many folks here have not contributed to WordPress before? OK, good, fair enough. Um, how many people here, how many of you make a living from WordPress? Good, good, that's a, that's a wide bunch. So, well, y'all need, don't need me to say, tell you that, since, especially since most of you are WordPress contributors, that WordPress is an open source project and it depends on ongoing sustained contributions for its survival, right? So, WordPress needs that going. And to, the, to facilitate that, a program called Five for the Future was created sometime in the past few years. And it essentially encourages individuals and organizations to pledge their time towards WordPress. Now, of course, WordPress needs contributions, and contributing is a noble act. But what if I told you that ongoing contributions or sustained contributions is a great way to grow and thrive? What if I told you that there's a solid business case for organizations and individuals to continue contributing to WordPress? So to demystify all these questions, I have with me some of the best I, I mean it the best WordPress contributors that I personally know. Please join me in welcoming Femi Prasid, Jonathan DeRoches, and Tammy Lister. Um, we've already heard about all of them, so I'm, without further ado, I'm going to ask them a bunch of questions, and together we're going to learn the answers to both these questions. Like, how can we grow by contributing? How can we make ongoing, sustained contributions to WordPress? And how can we, you know, how can organizations contribute to WordPress and, uh, you know, sustain and grow with WordPress? All right, so Femi, Jonathan, and Tammy, I'm super excited to have you with, uh, uh, with us today. So I, I know that we've, we've, you've, you've been introduced, but uh, could you briefly, please, please briefly share about your contributor journey in WordPress so far? How did you start contributing? How has the journey gone? What, where has it led you, and where are you right now? So let's go in alphabetical order. We'll start with Femi, we'll go to Jonathan, and then we go to Tammy. Hi, everybody. I am Femi Prasid from San Jose, California. I am the blog editor and user docs rep. I am also a WordPress content writer. I start, I've been working on the web since 2007. I started as a front-end developer, and then um, once I discovered WordPress, I started to uh, build custom websites um, with WordPress for small agencies. And by the end of 2020, I was kind of worn out by development, and I wanted to try something different. I wasn't sure what that something else was, but uh, all I knew was I wanted to stay in the WordPress space. So I started to look for ways to get more involved in the WordPress community. I um, started to show up in the Slack channels for some of the um, teams, um, specifically Docs team and um, you know, shadow in for the team meetings and get an understanding of what, what the team does and how they do things. And um, I have to say it was quite intimidating and uh, confusing at first, but um, after a while, um, you know, I started to take on writing the meeting notes for the docs team. And um, around this time, Milana uh, put in a blog post calling for volunteers to um, help out with the um, 5.8 release. So I started to take on tasks for 5.8, specifically for the end user documentation. And um, that's when I figured I really loved writing technical content. And since then, I've been actively um, contributing to the docs team. I have been one of the docs co-leads for um, several of the release cycles and also one of the noteworthy contributors for several release cycles since 5.8. And uh, now I'm also taking up the role as the block editor and user docs rep. And I'm here now. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan DeRogers. Um, I live in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and uh, I first discovered WordPress, I think around 2007. I was in college and a friend of mine said, hey, you know, check this out, it's pretty sweet, Let's, you can do a lot with it. Um, and then throughout college, I would use it for projects and for uh, some side work, for some freelance work along the way. Um, when I graduated, I moved into the small agency space and started building more sites with WordPress and taking it uh, you know, I, I went to school for web and internet, so it was it was kind of the path I was going on. 
and uh, quickly became my favorite tools. Um, I started going to some WordCamps in, I think, 2012, was WordCamp Rhode Island and WordCamp New York City were my first ones. Um, and I went to the contributor days there and got some insight into uh, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, pe peeking behind the curtain and seeing how the sausage was built and how uh, there was this huge community of people that were just like me, just like all of you here today, uh, that could put effort into improving the software, fixing bugs, growing the community around it. Um, and I actually just passed my 10 year anniversary of my first credited uh, con contribution to the project, which is really great. Um, I moved on into academia and I worked at a university where um, all of our web presence was on WordPress. And in 2018, I moved on to Bluehost where I was hired as a full-time contributor for um, their commitment to the Five for the Future program, which we'll, I think we'll dive into in quite, de quite a lot of detail here. Um, today, I'm the maintainer of several different components in core. Um, I'm a core committer um, and I'm frequently uh, not on release squads, but I'm there behind the scenes making sure that everyone has the resources they need to succeed and to make sure that the gears keep turning, the lights stay on, and um, doing a lot of the, the invisible work behind the scenes that we can't really expect unsponsored folks to be excited about or uh, actually spend their time on because a lot of unsponsored folks have less time to contribute in general, and they want to spend that on the things that they're more passionate about. And so um, I kind of pride myself in that. I'm employed to do that, so that's some of the stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Hi, I'm Tammy. Uh, I think I've probably had most uh, versions of contributing from I initially started where someone said, I don't think you should be doing your own thing. Uh, you should try this thing called WordPress. And uh, I tried this thing called WordPress and haven't looked back since. Um, and then I just started contributing, uh, um, doing my own thing, uh, sponsoring myself. Um, didn't know that's what it was called then. <laughs> and then slowly uh, started doing most teams I've done something with over the time. And then I kind of evolved to be doing full-time contribution. And I've worked on uh, numerous projects, uh, raising from core editor work uh, through to doing theme work as well, and lots of different teams. I now find myself in a really interesting position where I'm at Inside, uh, part of their Five for the Future, working specifically on developer work. Um, for me, it's been a really interesting different perspective on different types of uh, contribution and different teams. I've worked from core to design through to uh, buddy press through to themes. And uh, for me, I really enjoy that kind of variety that we have within a contribution project as well. I love it. So I was not kidding when I said I have the best panelists. Really, they are. And I love seeing the diversity that we have and the, the amount of work that they've done and the teams that they've contributed to. All right, so let's dive deep in. I'm curious. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start with Femi here again. So how has contributing to WordPress helped you grow? And uh, how has that journey been? And of course, you've mentioned that a bit. But at what, what skills have you learned? And how does it help you on a daily basis? Yeah. Um for um, so first and foremost, for me, uh, it helped me make a pivot in my uh, career from uh, web development to um, content writing, and um, I think uh, the skills, the, the learning, the skills that you learn here, the learning experience you get working in the docs team, it's very different from the experience you get working um, as a solo developer, um, you know, in a small agency. Um, independently, and um, you know, I've learned to uh, collaborate with the uh, a, big, a bigger team. I've learned to, um, you know, uh, which is spread across the globe. Um, you know, working from with different time zones, working, you know, only uh, like communicating in Slack, and um, you know, I've learned to write better. I've learned to um, write with more clarity and. Uh, um, you know, learn to be more uh, um, transparent with the work I do, and uh, also um, uh, just it's it's very different. It's it's a very open environment. So, um, and it, these are all skills that you don't get when you're working as an um, you know as a solo developer independently, right? So, um, and also um, 
the cherry on top is um, I get to build a reputation for my work and also, um, you know, connect with the bigger WordPress community. And uh, I think even the fact that I was able to, uh, I was invited to speak at this panel, it's just a testament to uh, what contributing has helped me achieve in the long term. And uh, yeah. You folks want to add to it? Yeah, I, I think all of those things extend to even sponsored people, you know, personal growth, um, growth amongst your colleagues from things that you learn and are, are able to pass along. Um, yeah, cultural growth, being exposed to new cultures. I've been very fortunate to be able to travel to all over the world to do this job and to help contributors around the, around the globe. And, um, yeah. It's, it opens up many doors in many different ways. Uh, plus one, <laughs> and so many. I also think it um, teaches you a lot of human skills. Um, it also, uh, the ability to not get bored <laughs> uh, in the best possible way. Uh, for me, I've gone from design, well, development, design, <laughs> back to development, um, bit of product. And that has really given me longevity and it continues and it will give me longevity. I think in some career spaces, um, you know we're all aging, whether we like it or not. Um, some career spaces you maybe need to think about pivoting and changing and moving out of those companies. And within this space and uh, within contributing, you can do that. And I've also seen people contributing to change careers as well. That has been something that I've actually seen people be able to do as well. Interesting. So the themes that I'm hearing is personal growth, uh, networking, and even like changing careers, like gaining skills. So what I'm hearing is there's definitely uh, a, a real benefit to contributing. It, it could be a way to you know, augment what you learn, the skills you learn, and to sort of like amplify them. Excellent. Moving on, um, again, I'd like to start with Femi again. As, so Femi, you're a self-founded contributor, and I know we have a diverse panel. We have Jonathan and... Uh, uh, Tammy, who are sponsored, and family, you're self-sponsored. You work on your own, right? So at the challenge that I've heard from many contributors is that they struggle to contribute consistently. I mean, some, some folks, they make one-off contributions, they drop off. So in your case, I mean, you mentioned that you've been a noteworthy contributor since 5.8, right? So how do you contribute consistently? Um, and what tips do you have for uh, our volunteer or self-sponsored contributors who would like to sponsor consistently, or sorry, to contribute consistently? Yeah, the one thing that keeps me motivated to contribute is um, I'm constantly learning new things. Um, you know, whether it's simple as writing the meeting minutes to GitHub markup language to setting up projects and workflows, there's, there's always something you learn, and that's exciting. And uh, the WordPress community is a bunch of really smart people, and I feel it's a great way to surround yourself with smart people, especially if you are um, a freelancer and you're working from home, you're by yourself. And uh, interacting with the team, it kind of make, energizes me, and it just um, I just love it. And also, it's kind of thrilling to know you are, um, you know, working on the documentation of a software which powers like 43 point some percentage of the web. So that, that kind of is thrilling for me. Um, as far as tips go, um, uh, I've, one thing I've noticed is folks get really excited when they come into the team uh, to contribute and uh, they take on a lot of tasks and then they get frustrated when they don't make progress and then they just, um, just leave. So my number one tip is start small. Um, you know, take on small, t uh, simpler tasks, maybe one or two tasks and, um, you know, have small wins and then you can just build on it. And the same goes for the number of te teams that you participate in on Slack. Um, so, you know, first start off with one or two Slack channels and, uh, you know, go from there because Slack can get really overwhelming sometimes. So just, just, just build on it. And pick your own adventures, Like right? Some days you might just... Um, make small changes uh, to your to some tasks and some day, some days you could just rewrite an entire article and either is fine um, you know don't beat yourself up you know just but also don't overcome it just uh, be realistic with what you um, you know what you set out to do and um, make sure you don't get burnt out or uh, you know frustrated 
Tammy and Jonathan, I'm curious. Your your you folks are. I mean, in, especially in your case, Tammy. I know you've you've gone through a bunch of roles. You've you've been sponsored, self sponsored. And Jonathan, similar as your 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 story as well. So, how do you contribute consistently? And what, do you have any tips for folks, especially from, from from like in the perspective of folks who sort of like traverse through all those uh, all those ways? So. Yeah, um, I you if you're not sure how to be, uh, take a step back and observe, but you want to always try to be realistic with what you can deliver. Um, it's a lot better to deliver less or promise less than it is to promise a lot and then not be able to do what you say you're going to do. Or uh, And sometimes that's not to say you shouldn't aim high at something that's out of your comfort zone or that you've never done before. Uh, but you don't want to sign up for 40 hours of work when realistically you have five hours a week in, or something of that nature. And so, you know, don't be afraid to start small, like Femi said, and uh, work on increasing or becoming more comfortable. And maybe after a couple of weeks of reading this handbook of how to contribute to this team, uh, you could get a lot more done in that same amount of time as you would have if you just overwhelmed yourself at the beginning on, in the onset. I think sometimes people think it's all or nothing with contribution. So uh, my sponsorship is eight hours. And for me, that's perfect. Um, uh, it gives me that perspective still of the work that I do, which I can then bring. And it also means I can uh, keep those skills going, but I can also do that core work. It also means for many companies when they are able to balance contribution. And I think that, that is also really important, um, either, no matter where you, whether you are self-sponsoring or whether you are a company who are looking to sponsor people. Um, sometimes it's very hard to do full-time sponsorship uh, just from that person, the maintenance of that person, the isolation of that person, the, um, the, just the commitment of that as well. Uh, so I, th I think it's really healthy. When I have been full-time, that's been great. When I've been on teams, it's been amazing. Um, when I've been working on some projects. But I would say, particularly for me in, this, in my own situation, I'm really worthwhile with the perspectives that I get to go outside and learn and then come back in by having that and that balance. And I personally want more part-time contributors because I think that the, that perspective makes us have a very healthy project. We always, always will need people, as you kind of point out, the full-time contributors are keeping the lights on. They're picking up the trash on the floor and keeping the lights on. But we're also gonna need those outside perspectives of the people that are building, the people that are working in agencies, the people that are doing that who can feed from their colleagues, who can then go into these projects with limited time, but they can take that perspective from working on those projects and then go and do some contribution. Uh, so personally, I really value that perspective. So what I'm hearing is there's value in pacing yourself. There's value in make, making contributions a habit. There's uh, value in, again, looking at different perspectives. This, it's even okay to maybe take up, take pauses and, you know, like, take it easy. Uh, yeah, I, th those are interesting perspectives. And uh, I think th there's a lot to it that uh, we need to, you know, like, explore more. So we've, we've spoken about contributions uh, individually. Let's, I think it's time to, you know, go a bit into, you know, um, organizations, right? Because, like, if you look at the Five for the Future program, it's, it's a space where uh, companies or organizations, they can actually, you know, sort of, like, pledge their time uh, to contribute to WordPress, right? So I want to ask this to uh, Jonathan and Tammy, since you are sponsored. Um, so I'm curious. So how do contributions work in your organizations? So I'd like uh, Tammy's perspective. Tammy, I know you work for Inside, and Jonathan, I know you work for Bluehost. So both are entirely different companies. Yours is a hosting, Blue, Jonathan, yours is a hosting company. Tammy, yours is an agency. So, and, and in, in your case, Tammy, I know you've worked, you've run a bunch of work in different organizations. So I'm curious, like, how do your organizations do sponsored contributions? So the bus, the, uh, to share more on where I'm coming from, I like our audience, I mean, at least the entrepreneurs or the business owners in our organizations, to get a bit more insight on how they can structure their own uh, sponsored contributions if they, wish, if they wish to. Yeah, I, I think sponsored contributions are really important, and we want 
we, we need a balance of self-sponsored and hobbyists and business sponsored. Um, as far as how it works inside of Bluehost, I'm on a team of, uh, we're called the WordPress Center of Excellence. So it's basically a, a team of people that are the respected experts in, in WordPress development um, within Bluehost. And then we're relied on to give guidance on best practices and, and all of those types of things. Um, I'm 100% external facing um, and my colleagues are a mix. And we, we really, outside of the business interests that they work on directly, um, I have a huge amount of autonomy as far as what I work on. And I'm really not, I've never been told what to do as far as like what to contribute to or how to contribute. It's more of I'm trusted to have the awareness of where I'm needed the most and where I can have the best impact. Um, and as long as we're out there having a positive impact on the community, it doesn't really matter what form that takes. It could be speaking, it could be leading a meetup, it could be committing to core in, in some cases. And so um, it, I'm very fortunate to have that. And it's, it's really important, I think, for companies to get back by sponsoring folks because you know, we, we want to prevent the tragedy of the commons where everybody's taking, it's, WordPress is a free software and you can use it and use it all you want and modify it all you want and build on it all you want. And if you have a business that you're, you're taking in tens or hundreds or millions of dollars, um, you know, it's in your best interest for that software to grow and become better. And the things that you're building on top of that software will directly benefit and improve from sponsored contributions that you're, you're able to give back. And so I, I think that's really important. So for me, uh, it's pretty much been since June. It's, it's kind of early. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I have eight hours. So uh, one of the tips I would give if you have that time is to try and literally pick a chunk. So I try and have a half of a day. For me, I, um, I've actually been involved in two releases, which is 6.3 and 6.4. So it's been pretty much, and like you were saying, the trust to do, which I think is incredible <laughs> um, to be able to be given that. Um, but also I'm here because of that. I'm at the community summit because of that sponsorship, uh, which I think is something we have to also recognize that that also uh, enables people to be able to attend these things. And by my accent, I'm obviously not from this country. <laughs> um, I had to travel a little bit. Um, so therefore, it enables people to come to these events. It enables people to join these conversations. And I think that, that is really important. As far as day to day, for me, um, it's pretty obvious the areas for me to contribute in um, and the areas to join in. I think it's an important note that for sponsored contributors to constantly be in releases would be something I would warn against. For me, actually, 6.4 is a kind of unique release, so it's kind of important. But I think um, sponsored contributors um, making sure that documentation happens, making sure that um, systems kind of happen, and making sure that uh, issues happen. One other thing is also um, not promoting tickets within, because you don't have that bias, but also um, ensuring that colleagues know where to report things or surfacing the right information. So say a version of um, WordPress comes out, saying just the crib notes or uh, sharing that information. We often make these presumptions because someone works on WordPress, they must know everything about WordPress. Well, that's not fair to make that expectation. But if we are living in that space and we are kind of with those things, we're going to have access to that information a bit more. Good. Thank you. Um, I think you both touched upon this a bit. So um, I want to I wanna prop, prop that a little more. So is that a business case for organizations to contribute to WordPress? So I'm asking this question in a very mindful way, because I know we are in a global financial, I wouldn't call it meltdown, like there's a downturn happening, definitely that's a downturn happening. Folks are not hiring as much as they used to. Um, so in that case, like people are being really, companies are being really mindful about, you know, either hiring new people or like contracting new folks or uh, even like getting their own employees to work on open source projects like WordPress. So in this milieu, what do you think 
for contributing to it. I know you both touched upon it. I want to focus on this part of the question, so which is why I'm asking this again. Yeah, I think it goes back to the business cases that you know you're building. You, you wouldn't want to build an office in a building that's going to disappear, right? If the foundation of the building disappears, then you don't have an office anymore. And so it's really about fostering that software and making sure that it's growing and improving and constantly evolving um, to new things that are out in the ecosystem or new technologies. Um, and so, like for example, at Bluehost, we've, we've built a new onboarding experience and it uses a lot of the underlying Gutenberg packages that are published into WordPress um, to give a more native feeling to it. And so by contributing back to the project, we improve the accessibility of those packages. We improve the, uh, you know, the experience, the, the, the native feeling that you're in WordPress consistency. And so by improving those things, you automatically, in a way, improve your own products that you're going to build on this. Uh, maybe you have a, a plugin that has forms or whatever it is. Uh, you know, and it, it's just how can you focus on the greater good of the project? Um, and that's something that's also great too is that by being sponsored, it's important that you're unbiased and it's okay for you to come to the table and say, hey, like this bug is really affecting us and we should look into it because it's obviously not us, but um, not come and say, hey, we want this, right? So you have to look at both sides. You have to look out for things that it might not be the greater good for the way that you want it, but finding that compromise. Um, and by being sponsored, it's by no means a pay to play. Like I'm, You're not automatically going to get people that uh, have decision level uh, trust. Uh, but over time, they'll build that through their, their goodwill contributions and showing that they are able to be um, agnostic to an organization and, and think about the software as a whole and the health of, of everyone involved. I think uh, two words come to mind. One is advocacy. Um, you have to sort of particularly, if you, I don't know, from an agency perspective, um, if someone came to me and said, hey, this, this thing doesn't work um, within inside, I would then have to be, okay, is this bug only relevant to this particular project that was in a very particular situation? Or is this affecting all agencies in WordPress? Generally, it is affecting or everybody within WordPress. If it affects one person who's doing something, um, and generally for me it's something to do with the co-editor work, um, that's a reason to get it fixed. And those kind of decisions are really great to be able to know and be able to speak for that space and be able to speak for that work. Um, the other is efficiency, which I think is a really good business case. Uh, you know efficiency of knowledge. You have the ability um, to surface knowledge more effectively, but you also have the ability to know things like roadmaps, efficiency to be able to just help with the code. The code base is just such a big thing as well. Um, know when you can build... Um, it's always, it's one of the kind of ones at the moment. When should you build a custom block? When should you build a pattern? Um, just as things are changing so rapidly and things are happening, that kind of advice that you get and then listening within the organization and kind of being able to be the middle point a little bit or trying to help a little bit there, um, you will find that. I think the one of the business cases I would say in the current climate that is harder to say is the full time. I will be honest with that. Um, but I think that you can find a balance with um, what, depending on the company, depending on what the company wants to do and how big the company is, because we're talking about a company. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there is always a reason for some form Makes sense, thank you. Uh, so I think the if I were to summarize this, I would, as you very likely pointed out, Tammy, uh, advocacy and efficiency, and as you pointed out, Jonathan, we need somebody to keep the lights on and we don't want the, you know, the floor beneath us to sink. And there's of course like, you you make an impact on the ecosystem that you work on and uh, that definitely, uh, it's it's valuable. Now we've, we've spoken to sponsored contributors. Femi, I'd like a self-sponsored or a volunteer or individual contributor perspective for you, from you on this uh, topic. I wanna, I remember you mentioned this specifically, like uh, you mentioned about how your contributions really complement your work, 
right? So could you elaborate on that just a little bit? I would like to know more about, you know, how your contributions support you in your professional journey as a freelancer. Or in other words, what is the business case for you as a freelancer to contribute to WordPress? Yeah, uh, for starters, it helped me make a pivot in my career from um, web development to um, technical writing. And uh, I think contributing is a great way to test out the waters if you um, want to make a career, you know, if you want to explore a new career path or if you want to um, make some changes in your career, hone new skills in the current job uh, without the pressures of a deadline or a fast-paced schedule, right? Um, and um, I got some real-world experience um, writing technical content and, uh, you know, and all my contributions are public. So they're all linked to my WordPress profile, which means someone wants to um, hire me based on my contributions. It's all out there. And, um, y you know, um, yeah, um, I guess, yeah, that's it. I guess also the fact that you're here, which Tammy mentioned, which is also a direct result of your, your contributions. I like it. So we've, we've been exploring the part of how contributions help, I mean, in Femi's case, freelancers, or in uh, Jonathan's and Tammy's case, organizations. So I'd like to sum up what we discussed so far. And uh, because I, I, I work full-time on Five for the Future, and the question that I keep hearing from organizations is, how do we set it up? Because that's, that's always very ambiguous. And I know we, we discussed that a little bit. So Let's say, I mean, this is to the, all the entrepreneurs here in this audience and watching us live or watching us later in WordPress.tv. If, between the three of you, you could share any advice to organizations specifically on how they can set up their program and how they can scale it up. In any tips is fine, any, anything that comes to you, your mind from your vast experience contributing to WordPress. Let's keep it short though. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan, you can go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I think that a great way to start is to just take your team to a WordCamp and a contributor day. Um, I mean, that, in a sense, crowdsources their onboarding into contributing. Uh, and then you don't have to start with set amounts of time, uh, but maybe you do something where, uh, like some agencies do, the whole company, once a month, they have the whole day is contributing to whatever you would like in the project or adjacent to the project. Um, and so maybe that's a way to test that and maybe some people stand out and they're excelling at that and you could say, hey, well, how would you like, uh, you know, a week, a month or, or something of that effect. You, it will be really difficult to really just cold turkey make that change sometimes because you'll have lead times with clients and you might have to do a little bit of planning uh, in, in most cases. So I, that, that's kind of it. Just, again, start small just as you would as a, a single contributor and you don't have to commit your whole organization for a whole week every, every month. Um, yeah. I would say um, don't think you, you have to be so fixated on a certain amount of, of hours that you do based on it, as, as what you were saying. Think of it as a goal, and I love that idea of think, picking one day and have like a contribution, even once a month, once a year, it doesn't matter, you, you, you're trying. And I think that that's the ideal, you're, you're getting that information and you're starting. I would also flip it to um, self-sponsored, if you really, really are looking for that and you're really looking to start, just start showing your contributions, um, because I, I have quite a few people come to me and they say, hey, I would really love to be sponsored for this, I'd really love to do this. Take it slowly. <laughs> um, if you are running yourself, you are just gonna burn out. So just really think of that, and think of the longevity, both of both sides, the longevity of the contributor and the longevity of the sponsor are incredibly important for our ecosystem. If we don't have both, we pretty much don't have open source. That's what these programs like Five for the Future are about. It's about longevity of both sides. And it's not about an arbitrary number. So that's, to me, that's what it's about. So um, it's really about care and consideration and building and nurturing. Yeah. Um when you don't have the backing of a company, um, coming for events and word camps like this, um, it gets um, hard financially for self-sponsored contributors. So 
you know one thing that companies could do is you know have you know help out like start a financial aid for sponsoring the self sponsored contributors uh, because um yeah and um the other thing um wordpress releases happen like every 3 4 months and uh, there are a lot of self sponsored contributors who work and uh, who are involved in the process so if um companies can sponsor contributors per release right you know that's that's something that will be awesome thank you folks and for me i'm glad you mentioned sponsorship because that was the main topic that i wanted to touch upon today and i purposefully decided like you know kept it towards the end sponsorship i mean it's something that i have been hearing it's something that i'm trying to support a bunch of people with so th- there's a lot of contributors in the wordpress project who do a lot to wordpress unfortunately they are limited to the number of contributions or the amount of contributions that they can make um because like they are volunteers they are unable to you know contribute us beyond a certain number of time but many of them are quite passionate they really really want to do it and i know from speaking to a bunch of people that they really want to do it like and they have the skills to do it if 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 and like fully they could you know give that extra time to contribute wordpress it would really really help the project so my question and with this we are going to wrap up this discussion and maybe you know open to some questions is on is to is through, it's to all three of you uh on i i'm going to start with the sponsored contributors first so to all the folks and and the reason why i'm starting with you first is because you are sponsored so to to all the folks here to all the contributors out here who are looking for sponsorship what advice do you have how can they you know get sponsorship how can they get sponsored for their work yeah for me it was really just being present at events as many as i could um i was fortunate enough where my employers were in the wordpress space and so you know going to events and meeting people and meeting other contributors um in many cases the contributors like we we deal with a lot of really really difficult problems and it attracts some of the smartest people i've ever met to uh explore these and find solutions and so just meeting them and talking to them and learning from what they are working on um was just a huge way for personally to just almost level up myself and um learn learn different things the other thing is kind of just coming back to what we were saying at the beginning is to just be realistic and be reliable be be present be uh persistent uh ask questions and just let your work speak for itself do just do good work do it for the right reasons and um do it in public as you should in open source and eventually there'll be a timeline or a track record or your wordpress.org profile will be all sparkly and loaded with badges and contributions and all that um and then when it comes time where you see something an organization that aligns with your goals and that is looking to sponsor someone you can uh that they'll likely already be aware of you or they'll know your work and what you've worked on so the only thing i'd say is um I think there's a little bit of a danger to look and say there's one path to sponsorship because I really do not think there is uh, the path that I had to sponsorship was very meandering <laughs> and very um was initially the the very first time I ended up in sponsorship was not intended I didn't take my first job to have sponsorship that ended up in sponsorship um that was many many years ago um to give advice based on my experience would not be the best because it would be based on purely on my experience so i will abstract that and give um point 1 work out how much time you have do you want a job that involves part of that to be sponsored do you want a job that involves full time sponsorship that will change that would mean that you would stop doing the, your current job that would mean you would want to go and work in certain companies if you would want to do that so that changes the conversation that you need to start having with yourself there are a number of ways that you can start looking for a self sponsored if you want to do a number of ways that you can put little badges and different um, things on to start having that for yourself tips or whatever um start considering that that does not pay 100% but that starts you getting a little bit more visible and saying hey I'm in this space hey hey I would like to be seen 
as you were saying, like start kind of getting that start. You do not need to run straight into a release to get sponsorship. That would be my big thing because sometimes people think they need to do that in order to do that. And then they take on a big release, commit to 40 hours a week when they are trying to run their own business. And that is not good for someone. Uh, so really just find out what you want to do and work out what time you have <laughs> and and then kind of go from there because it's really going to be different. Um, do you want to be sponsored for the current thing you're doing or do you want to change as well? So that's part of it. I, I guess before passing it to Femi, um, with self-sponsored contribution, like we're talking about businesses sponsoring people and obviously the financial aspect of it, but for self-sponsoring, it doesn't have to be a financial consideration in some ways. It could be a hobby that you do for watching TV a couple nights a week that you, you kind of tinker. And so I'm curious if you have like how you think about it or if that's something that you would recommend to get started as well. Yeah. Um, I personally believe if you have the time to binge and scroll, you have the time to do anything. So you just have to make it a priority. And uh, you just have to show up and do the work. That's my mantra if I want to do something. So I think you have time. You just you know, you have to find something that you are really um, excited about and something that you're really passionate about. And just um, keep showing up and do the work. And uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to um, take on challenges when you are um, contributing. And also, don't let the language barrier be um, you know, it stop you from um, contributing because we're all a very um, friendly group. So, um, you know, just just be helpful, be kind, and uh, um, also be realistic about what you set out to do because you don't want to end up burned out or frustrated. So just um, learn to balance that. So one of the things is, before I ever had a job <laughs> from WordPress, uh, my sponsorship, uh, my, my payback from WordPress was just in the learning, was in the knowledge. Um, and I think sometimes you need to make that kind of conversation is, uh, with, with yourself as well. I think sometimes these conversations about uh, sponsorship uh, also need to be looking at the kind of ebb and flow a, a little bit. I, it's super tricky because you are giving up some time somewhere and um, there are bills to pay. <laughs> and, but you really need to look at that. If you are gaining these skills that mean you can uh, charge more for something here, then great, that's worth doing. And, and that actually happened to me. I was gaining skills, which meant I could, I even wrote a book and I even could charge more when I was working for myself. That, that was worth doing. So. It's kind of those conversations that are happening, and that was a self-sponsoring thing as well. So making those kind of conversations with yourself about uh, what is this doing, what are you gaining, and, and doing that kind of sheet with yourself is really important as well. Yeah, I think we are slightly over time, but uh, that's all that we want to talk about. So the takeaway that I've, I've heard as uh, listening to you all is, there's definitely a business case for organizations to you know, contribute to WordPress and even for self-founded contributors, if you start contributing, there's a bunch you can learn and that's a, it's a journey of personal growth, it's a journey of passion, especially if you're up for it. And there's a solid way that you can actually grow as a person or as an individual, as, as a business. So, well, to wrap up, I guess, I, I would encourage everybody here to you know, consider contributing to WordPress more consistently. There's so many ways that you can do it. And I hope our panelists have shared some tips which help individuals or organizations to be more consistent in their contributions. Yes, I, I, I want to repeat about the Five for the Future program. It's available at wordpress.org slash five. Um, it's a way to pledge your time and resources, uh, either individually or as an organization. And the number five percent, as, as we mentioned here, it's just arbitrary. It's up to 5%, it's depending on, it's, it's what you can contribute. Again, also you don't even need to pledge. If you contribute consistently, that's, that's great. Because the project eventually needs contributions for WordPress to survive and for us to survive along, or to grow or to, to, or to thrive along with WordPress. WordPress needs these contributions. Uh, organizers, can we get maybe like one or two questions? Do we have time for that or should we wrap up? I know we are like slightly over time, so. Is there space, is, is there time for a, a question or two maybe?
Anyone? Okay. All right. So we ha I guess we have time for maybe two questions, one to two questions. Does anybody in the audience have any questions for these amazing contributors? Any questions? So we have we have we have mics over here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Does it work? Yeah. Hopefully. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I just uh, what I was missing and it might uh, empower other people to like see the bigger picture. Can you um, point out maybe? how much networking helps with finding, like getting seen and, and being visible and like maybe being sponsored. Yeah, for me it was big because as I said, I was going to events, I was meeting the people, doing the things I wanted to take part in, um, getting them to put a name with an avatar, a face with an avatar. Um, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's your work that is, uh, is the networking and people using what you build or, or contribute to. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's always uh, interpersonal networking, it's sometimes it's from your work. Uh, at the beginning, not at all for me. <laughs> um, I spent quite a number of years before I even went to a work camp, but that was physical networking. Um, and I think it's really important to say that our, sometimes our networking is uh, turning up in this uh, IRC channel back in the day. Uh, <laughs> um, ooh. Um, or commenting on a ticket, or um, making those in those interactions were incredibly powerful. So when I did turn up to my first WordCamp, whilst I was scared, <laughs> um, I knew, and um, I I could have conversations. Uh, did it take me a long time? Yeah, it took me a number of years before I still felt comfortable. Um, networking is not my natural thing, even now. Um, but uh, having conversations, yes, worked. I do not think, though, that you need to be a network person um, uh, in here, but because our, in a traditional sense, I think our networking can absolutely happen virtually. <laughs> um, and I'm probably one of the big testaments to that um, because I probably wouldn't be as successful if networking wasn't virtual um, to start off with then you can be able to speak and get welcoming, um, which I think is really, really important that we make it accessible for all different types so that we can embrace. I agree. Um, you know, networking, uh, when you're contributing, it's kind of like networking online um, because you're showing up in the meetings, you know, your name is, is there in places. And when you come in for the conferences, people know you from that and they just need to know okay this is the person this is the avatar they just have to match that so it's like an online version of networking i know i said we have time for two questions but i think we should wrap up because this is five more minutes until the next session so thank you everybody for listening patiently and uh, you can find the panelists they are here you can ask them questions thank you so much i really appreciate it have an amazing day and thank you, the organizers of WordCamp US. This is a fantastic event. We cannot thank you enough. And thank you for inviting us to talk about contributions. Thank you. Thank you so much.